Okay. I'm going to hit the... Hey guys, welcome back to another edition of AFK Discussions. It's your boy Jason. Phil is off tonight, but guys, we've got a big show tonight. So um, first off, check out fattac.com for all your tactical needs. Um, if you're a big dude, they got you covered. If you're a small dude, they got you covered also. Um, also, check us out wherever you do social media, wherever you listen to podcasts, we are there. Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, all of them. But guys, um, tonight I would like to welcome Chris Bell. He is a filmmaker. He is a horror fanatic. He runs cons. He he does a little bit of everything. And so how's it going, man? It is going awesome, Jason. Thank you so much for having me on the show tonight, man. I'm excited. Yeah, man. I'm glad to have you on, dude. Um, I watched your film. It was really good. I, I, I was really entertained and um let's just get right into it man um yes so tell everyone a little bit about you a little bit about what you do and just all the goodness absolutely so i am chris bell uh better known around knoxville as my moniker the grand duke of spook i am the monster of scaramonies for the creepy con halloween and horror convention that's coming up in august it's just a couple of months away august 2nd through the 4th come hang out with me at creepy con it's going to be a huge show this year and as of recent uh yes a newly debut maker. maker uh i've always loved making smaller short films you know in the 10 to 15 to 5 to 2 minute range uh for the past few years for years and years since high school and things like that uh but i finally took a crack at a micro feature uh so the film came out to be about 35 minutes long but it is called what dwells beneath it is a kind of cosmic horror creature feature that follows a team of urban explorers that stumble upon an abandoned tourist cave that uh homes an ancient evil that should have never been disturbed yeah dude it was really good um i i liken to liking it back to a bunch of um horror films i really enjoy um i got some like evil dead vibes um like we were talking earlier i was like some of the like music kind of reminds me of beetlejuice and yes. you know it's it's got its uh, moments, too, of, like, a little bit of a comedy, like, really dry comedy, which I really enjoyed. Um, I'm not, it's, this is not a spoiler, but I, I love the, the cave jelly. So. Yes, you know, the, <laughs> the, a lot of the dialogue, too, is I, that cave. So we filmed in an actual cave. So the the environment itself was very harsh. But my fiance and I had actually toured this cave. We'd been around this cave four or five times already and had taken groups of friends with us and stuff so a lot of the dialogue in the movie is just dialogue that me and my friends had carried on in real life checking out yeah. the cave <laughs> that's awesome um so what got you into um the filmmaking or i mean what did something like inspire you like older films um just you know Definitely, uh, definitely older films like uh, a lot of the Universal Monster movies are things that I grew up on big time. Uh, Abbott and Costello and the Marx Brothers were huge uh, in my life, even as a child. I loved old black and white stuff like that. And I really kind of got into it, like I said, at a younger age. Uh, I've always wanted to do some form of entertainment. I've done theater uh, I was an independent professional wrestler for three or four years there for a while. Awesome. And um, really, the convention circuit, I started doing uh, stand-up comedy probably eight or nine years ago now. And doing that, I loved the live performance aspect of it, and it got me into like hosting and doing things like that. And uh, that kind of lended itself to me getting into horror conventions, which horror has always been something that I've loved it's it's been something that's been a part of me for a very long time and 
it's always just been kind of intimidating to take a crack at because you want these things to be perfect. You want it to be, you know, this huge, big, perfect thing. And you, you kind of talk yourself out of ever starting because there's a million reasons why it's not going to be perfect. So yeah. finally taking a crack at something that I love and, you know, my first little attempt uh, at giving my love letter kind of back to the horror community and to creature features my my favorite genre of horror so i like to think that that we did we did a pretty good job with with the amount of time we filmed the budget we had it was uh I, i'm very pleased with it yeah I, I really enjoyed it i thought it was great um so speaking of like the creature features what would you say like your all-time favorite monster is mm, pumpkin head Pumpkinhead, really? Pumpkinhead, I interesting. Abs I absolutely love Pumpkinhead. I love how like a lot of monsters are very mindless, and uh, I I don't know. Pumpkinhead has a real sense of humor. <laughs> He's especially the first one. I wasn't so much big on the sequels. Uh, anything that came after where Tom Woodruff Jr. was the Pumpkinhead pilot puppeteer. Uh, wasn't really a big fan of, but the very first pumpkin head, I think is one. Yeah. One of my absolute favorite monsters. That's, that's awesome. So I would say, um, I, I know it's kind of a one and done, but man, gosh, it, I always, it, it scared the crap out of me when I was a kid too. So that's another plus, but, um, American werewolf in London. Yes. Oh my gosh, dude, that. Mm. That's probably my favorite monster of all time. And such Just a good werewolf terrified. transformation. Oh my gosh. Yes. That, yes. Like, still one of the best ones to date. Like, I absolutely love that transformation. And practical yeah. effects. They, it's all practical. That's the big thing for me is practical effects. I think CGI has its place to enhance and make things certain cool ways, but you just can't get away from a guy in a foam latex suit. Yeah, so I'm a, I'm a huge werewolf fan. Like, gosh, I, they oh, terrified yeah. me as a kid, and now I'm just like fascinated by it and like the lore and everything. And there's like you know, lore in North America, like the Dog Man phenomenon. Oh yeah, I'm I'm all about that. Um, <laughs> but dude, it's like g going back to that movie making werewolf in London. I mean, it just had some bizarre scenes in it. It was just yes. so awesome, like the dream sequence with the Nazi werewolves. I mean, yes, that was just crazy. Like yeah. they and and just the the weird turn. Like I don't want to say campy because that almost makes it sound bad or something. But I love when horror movies lean into their campiness and they don't take themselves too seriously. And they really, if you're gonna lean into it, go fucking berserk with it. Be completely yeah. ridiculous and absurd. Yeah. That's another, I mean, like, like I mentioned, um, Evil Dead, but yes, that's another series that just, you know, the first one, you know, uh, when it was a, you know, a film project, uh, or a, like a, a project for, um, his cinema class, mm -hmm. um, and, uh, fucking, I don't think of the director's name. I feel like an idiot right now, My I'm very ADD. So sometimes my mind goes, goes blank. <laughs> um, Sam Raimi. Yes. So, yeah. So. It this the first one when I was a kid because I watched it also when I was young, um, and then I watched the second one and I was like, "What is going on? <laughs> what is What's happening? up with this deer on the wall?" Like laughing. <laughs> I'm like, what is going on? And dude, those movies are still are just I love them so much. <laughs> yeah, that's no, I I agree hundred percent. There are. Like, is it not to give too much away about mine, but there are a few scenes that I really wanted to be bloodier and gorier, but the cave literally kept drinking any amount of blood that we spilled on the ground. <laughs> like, really? it would just disappear and be soaked into the dirt. Like, we have paid tribute to the cave. Okay. <laughs> That's... <laughs> That's awesome. Um, Gosh, so what, like, I know you, you said you had some trouble filming. Um, You went back to do some pickup shots and, like, everything yes. was closed out. You couldn't get back in. Um, So have you heard, Have has anyone reached out to you, or did you try to reach out to anyone to go and film? I can't remember what we talked about on and off air. Yeah, so I'm, no. I'm maybe mixing stuff, but so anyways, guys, if I didn't, if we didn't talk about it on air, um, 
he filmed at a, a cave, an undisclosed location. Um, they go back to do the last shots, like pickup shots, and he can't get in because it's blocked. So um, yeah. only if you want to go into that a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. So um, with this being a, a location like it was, we were literally out in the middle of nowhere at this very real abandoned forest cave. Um and at the time, there were no, there was really no one to get a hold of to ask about filming there. It was just, there were no signs anywhere that said, you know, no trespassing, anything like that. People would bring their kids down there just to go walk through the cave. A lot of people didn't go very far back, uh, not like us. The cave itself probably goes back a little over a mile. Um, so at like the furthest point back that we were filming, it was 25 to 30 minute walk back to the mouth of the cave. Um, mm -hmm. so with all that going on, it was, you know, go, 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 go. It was very demanding, very, um, we were filming for 14 hour days, most days for three days straight inside of this cave. And it was very taxing on, it was a small crew moving, doing basically everything, so um, when we did have to come back and get these pickup shots of just some of the cave reveals and things like that, um, unfortunately, the neighbors in the area had called so much about teenagers and stuff going down there and vandalizing the place that someone had come and welded a plate over the mouth of the gate uh, that said no trespassing on it. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of sucked, but... If you notice one of the cave reveal shots that we get, and you'll know this, but and the people that see the movie will know this, it starts with this kind of right above the bottom of that gate, and it goes up, and it shows how cascading down all the vines are and everything. We had to get that shot like that because just below that was the giant metal plate that said no trespassing, so the mouth of the gate looked completely different. Yeah, yeah. Huh. That's very interesting. Um now I know there's there's some caves in in the Knoxville area that um, I was like, man, you know, I, I know the cave that would be awesome to film in. <laughs> um, and I know one that they do events there and stuff, and it's a it's in um, I think it's called Cher is it Cherokee Cave? Yeah, the Cherokee Caverns. Yeah, I don't know. Have you ever talked oh, to yeah, those they're, guys? I'm, they're mm -hmm. very good friends of mine. Uh, okay. Them and the showrunners out there. Yeah, I, I love Cherokee Caverns. There's there's some great people. <laughs> Yeah, I went to but, I think trick or treating there a couple of times. Yeah, they have yeah, some like really it. cool events out there. Like I, I highly yeah. encourage everybody to check out that because that's one you can go in. That's not an abandoned one. That is an open yeah, tourist yeah. cave that you can go on tours through the cave. Yeah, so very cool there. I highly recommend that. Yeah. Um, also, I mean the thing about the no trespassing because I've my co-host phil he does some you know exploration videos of abandoned places and um i'm like gosh you know i would love to do that uh -huh. but i do not want to get arrested exactly you know you and gotta be thing, very... once they put up a, yeah once they put up that no trespassing sign that's the big thing you go in exactly. now it's you're done for you know yeah now there's, there's this posted yeah. sign that says yeah. you can't do that and that's yeah you have to be because I I'm a big fan of the urban exploration stuff too. My my fiance is a huge fan of like old places and old houses and things like that. So she's actually the one that found the cave. And when we initially went, we thought it was going to be just some little like oh you go and look at the mouth of this cave and it's really cool and you leave. I had no idea how expansive this place was. Yeah, yeah. I mean it's it seems pretty large. <laughs> it's it is huge. Uh, yeah. And it's like I said, you're we were underground for hours and hours and hours at a time. No daylight. No, you're, you're in weird oxygen levels, and it'll really mess with you down there. Like, yeah, it was an intense shoot. Mm -hmm. Now, we I grew up. Um, there's a couple of caves that were accessible. Um, one, I think that now they have. Uh, I think they blew up the entrance oh. to it, so people can't go in. But it was over in like the Claxton area, but okay. we used to go up there all the time, and it was, it was awesome. Like we'd mm -hmm. go camp out there. Um, there was a house that had like a little parking area, and they would, you know, they would let people go up there. But I, I think oh, someone may have been hurt or something, and they had to, you know, close it up. That's all it takes. <laughs> yeah, it had a name, but I can't remember the name of it. I know there's another one called Rock Cut, I mm -hmm. think, and it's like 
in the Powell area, but it's okay. one that you kind of have to have to squeeze in and kind of go down. Oh. Open yeah, I never went in that one. I, I don't like tight spaces. So, yeah. <laughs> See, that was something, even in our casting call, when I was, when I was putting out casting auditions and stuff, I had to let people know this was going to be a very strenuous role. You had to be okay with dark places. You had to be okay with tight spaces, whole, you know, all that stuff. Because the yeah. darkness that's inside of a cave is a few of the cast kept calling it advanced darkness because there's just literally no light anywhere from any points. Yeah. And it, it's, it, I don't know, it, it'll really mess you up. It, it's very uh, disorienting. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. I have uh, been in a situation where, you know, we were in there, we turn off all the lights. It's just, there's no describing it. If you had to experience it, you know, exactly. And a lot of times all you had was a headlamp, a few headlamps and like a crew of people luffing equipment to the next location. And it, I, I couldn't have done it without the crew that I had. That's for sure. Um, my AD, uh, Tyler Broadway and, um, uh, one of the executive producers and my sound person, Brian Macho, uh, absolutely fantastic people. And I like, they went on so many location scouts with me. They helped me light the, the cave. They helped me do so many things. Uh, Tyler, you know, was someone that I could really trust behind the camera whenever I was on screen doing things. So very cohesive team and something, like I said, I couldn't do it without those guys. That's awesome. Cause you know, that's, I mean, cause I, um, so my, my full-time job is, um, I work in marketing and I'm a I'm senior multimedia okay. uh, <laughs> designer. So I do film, I do, um, photography, I do graphic design. Yes. Um, so yeah. So I, I know how important it is to have someone there that can, you know, knows lights and, you know, can know, know sound to help with the sound and just, I mean, all the little intricacies. I mean, you got to have a good crew in order to um, get a good production. So, yeah. yeah, because I, I tell people, you know, that we were having 14 hour shoots and they're like, holy crap. And I'm like, but the amount of stuff that we filmed in three days uh, in those 14 hour days was, you know, incredible. You know, I applaud everyone on that shoot because it was not easy on a single person there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. And I mean, just, I, I, you know, knowing from doing it, I mean, just lugging equipment it, oh, it yeah. sucks. <laughs> you know? It really does. And people, I think, assume that we had, you know, all these production assistants, all these stage hands and stuff that could run around. We had, you know, the, the four, four or five main people that we had. And then, you know, some of the crew would grab, some of the cast would grab stuff and help. Like, it was a very much an all hands on deck kind of shoot. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. So man, um, I'm really, really itching to know, cause we kind of talked about this also, um, what got you into horror? And if you have had any experiences of like the supernatural and paranormal, um, in your life? Yes, yes, yes. So there, um, there are a couple of experiences that I like to talk about, uh, a few actually, and one of which um is not paranormal but the the location i get i hear it get talked about a lot and so i kind of like to shed light on it whenever i can too um but one of the big things that got me really into horror was honestly wasn't exactly a paranormal experience one of the things that really got me into horror was my mom used to let me watch a, a lot of horror movies when i was a kid uh they thought it was hilarious to watch me get scared at the little thing the leprechaun used to terrify me oh that was a whole big thing so the greatest movie of all time leprechaun 2 leprechaun 2 yes <laughs> so then as far as paranormal experiences go um i've i've had a few um silly ones a lot of times i've had the same one kind of twice in two different places where it's the middle of the night and i get up and i'm walking down the hall to someone's bathroom or something and i bump into what i think is like their parent or something and i'll say in the next morning like hey sorry i ran into you last night like, what are you talking about like, so no. just like oh okay that i very much know i bumped into a person there um i like using um divination dowsing rods 
quite okay. a bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's a that's a really fun kind of little tool to use when we go into some of these uh, locations that there are spirits or activity or things like that. It's an easy way to communicate and and kind of a a low energy on their part way to be able to communicate, which is a lot of fun. And I've I've gotten some really good readings from places um, around the area. But the place that really I hear about a lot, I don't know if you're familiar with the Red Ash Cemetery. I am not. Okay. So I'll see it pop up. <clears throat> I'll see that place and the Sensaba Tunnel. The Sensaba Tunnel pops up all the time on these uh, like ghost forums and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And that place is just a dirty drainage ditch. No, There's, really. You, but people are like, oh, you can drive through it. And if you stop it, you can't drive through it. It's, yeah. it's don't go there. It's a don't listen to the stories. It, it, even if you walk through the pipe, you don't hear anybody screaming and crying. It's all bull crap. Don't do that. Also, the Red Ash <laughs> Cemetery. Stop going there. Leave that place alone. It is not haunted. It is just very heavily guarded by the few locals that live there whose family are buried on that hill. No, I mean, yeah, that's, that's, I mean, we, that's sad when people do that, you know? See, we went and did an investigation back in the day yeah. and had this recorder out and we're asking, you know, is there anybody who wants to talk to us? Is there anybody who wants to say anything? And when we were going back and listening to the footage, we heard this whisper. Dear, and we were like, when we were standing back by these bushes near this like statue, and I was like, oh, that's got to be a ghost. That must be it. Like, let's crank up the the. the, the. And so we we're listening to it real close, and it the 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 voice says, "I'll take the one on the right." And I listened to it a few times, and then realized that it was not a ghost. We had picked up two people having a conversation in the bush behind us about if we had started vandalizing anything who was going to take the reason i know that i started putting things together we were walking through the graveyard and i would hear at, at this certain point you would hear like rustling in the leaves in the woods and stuff and i mm -hmm. kept thinking ah, it's an it's an animal out there but there were literally people in the woods that were following us just outside of eyesight watching what we were doing to make sure we weren't going to start vandalizing the place. That is infinitely scarier to me yeah. than any ghost will ever be. Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> so don't go there. Stay. The, yeah. There's so many stories about Red Ash and a goat man, and a, but just stay away from there. It's <laughs> See, I haven't heard about the goat man and Red Ash. I know that in Kentucky there's um, Legends of the Goat Man, but... Yeah, so that's that's interesting. Well, tend um, for everybody. Stay the hell away from there, <laughs> um, man. I thought for a second there, I thought you were going to say um, um, Elkmont because that's I don't know if you know about Elkmont. That's I've been there and it, it's I have had some pretty heavy experiences there. Yes, I've heard about um, it. I've never gotten yeah. to go there myself, but I have heard about that one. Yeah, to where. Um, like we walked into a cabin and it was, I mean, you know, there's no, there's no, um, insulation or anything. These are old cabins right. and it was like deathly quiet. You walk in and it's silent. It's, it was so weird. Like, yeah, you um, hear things in yeah. old houses yeah. still like, yeah. And then, uh, we heard like we were in another cabin and we heard walking on the porch of another, of the one behind it. And there was no one there. Um, but the probably well there there's another experience of there we went with uh in like a, a paranormal group okay and they had one of the music boxes yeah, that yeah, are yeah. motion activated yeah so we had that in a room and also um some lights that were most motion activated and a rim pod uh, okay and like everything went off like the music box, the REM pod, the lights. So, I mean, you know, if one goes off, it could be a fluke, but when right. everything, it's like, the, it was, yeah, <laughs> that was, that was pretty weird. Um, but the strangest thing, so I was, I was never like one to believe in spirit boxes. Mm -hmm. um, speaking of which, uh, right here. <laughs> so, um, and we went and we had, um, I, my, my co-host before he was my co-host, co-host, he, um, came down here 
and to visit and we kind of met up and cause he had been on our show already. Yeah. And um, he does a lot of ghost hunting stuff. He does a lot of stuff in the Bridgewater triangle. Okay. I don't know if you know about that okay. place. It's where the, uh, the conjuring house yes. is in the Bridgewater triangle. Yes, yes, yes. Um, but yeah, so he does a lot of investigations up there. So he came down, he brought a spare box and we're in the cabin and always just like, ah, you just get, it's just radio station. You're just, you know, putting too much, you're just trying to hear something and you, right. you know, but when you get a full sentence that <laughs> yeah. you, wouldn't hear, you would not hear on the radio. So we were talking uh, about the um, Cherokee legend of the spear finger. I don't know if yeah. you've heard of that. Yeah. Uh, so we, he, I was filming and he asked the question, you know, we've heard um, that there's a witch called the spear finger. Um, do you know anything about that? And without like, not like having to wait for an answer, it like instantly. He said, that's devil worship. I'm like, what? Like that mm-hmm. I've never heard anything say that's devil worship on the radio. That I mean that and if it did, that's such a coincidence, you know? Right? It, like, yeah. like I yeah. don't know. That's too so, coincidental at that point. Uh needless to say, I ordered one right <laughs> when I back. Yeah, I have one now. Now I'm a believer. <laughs> I am because I've I've picked up stuff and it's you know, it's you can't explain it, you know. So no, I'm I'm with you on that. There there are a few things that I very much was skeptical of, and I'm I'm a hundred percent a believer now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I know we talked a little bit about um the dog man earlier. Yeah, and I saw your face. You're like, so what do you think about this dog man creature that's supposed to exist in North America? So I am a huge cryptid fan. Period. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I love that everybody, cause where is dog man? Is that more? So it's, I think it started in Michigan, Michigan, that was okay. Michigan dog man. And then yes. there's one, um, the beast of Bray road is mm-hmm. another one and that's up in Northeast, but and see, he's more I'm like talking... beast of Bray roads, more like werewolf esque. Yes. Yes. Right. And like the dog man's more like, I got a trench coat and a cigarette. I'm not sure if it's, I don't remember. <laughs> I mean, that, I mean, I think anything upright canid now is called dog man. Yeah. Um, yeah. I really don't like dog man term. I, I much prefer just calling it a werewolf, you know? Yeah. It's, um, you know. But I mean, I don't, I don't know if it's a trench coat and cigarette. I mean, that's funny though. I, I, like I that saw imagery. so many images of this thing in a hat and, and trench coat. Like, is it a yeah. detective from the fifties also? <laughs> it's, I don't know. it's so funny. There's a werewolf. Um, see. Yeah. <laughs> but, but this phenomenon, I mean, it comes all the way down to Tennessee. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's the land between the lakes. I don't know if you've heard that story. I don't um, think but so. But there was a murder there in the, I think it was the late, either late seventies or early eighties, um, that they attribute to uh, a werewolf type of creature. Okay. Um, a whole family got slaughtered, and they found like body parts hanging from trees, and yeah, it's, Holy it, it's, it's wild. Yeah, look it up, um, because I'm I'm not going to recount it. The story yeah. did not. I mean, it's, it's crazy. Um, it. Yeah, it sounds like it sounds like a movie. Seriously. Um, and then around here, there has been, um, dogman sightings and also Sasquatch sightings. Um, okay. but there, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's, See, I don't know. <laughs> I hear a lot about the, uh, the Tennessee wild man too. Oh yeah. Definitely. Here. That's, definitely. that has started circulating again. Um, I do. I used to do these like cryptid mockumentaries uh, mm-hmm. on my Creature Corner channel, where they were these like ten to fifteen minute long cryptid stories, where I would just play all the parts in all of the reenactments because I could, I didn't have friends that would come over and do so. <laughs> it was all just me doing it. Yeah. Um, but I, I got into so many of the cryptids. I loved uh, the Kentucky had the Kelly Green men. I don't know. If you're familiar with these people, um, is that the one they were? Um, they were like, was it a family that had a green tint to their skin? Is that the, it? Was no, this was like okay. a, basically like an alien invasion <clears throat> that oh, happened. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, these little like goblin esque, yeah, yeah, creatures. Hop, 
Hopskinville Goblin. Hopskinville, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. So Geraldine Sutton came on my show, who is the daughter of the man who that whole story is about. So she was a little girl when these aliens reportedly attacked their house that night. She told me that she remembers everything that happened. Her dad yes. shooting at these things and the bullets just like ricocheting off of it. So I... I have a very big um, belief in in the unexplained and, and cryptids and everything. I, I'm never one to say, no, that doesn't exist. Yes, I the things that I have a heart, I think the reason that so many different places have so many different iterations of these stories is because if, if and where these creatures do exist, I don't believe that there's just one of them. Yeah, yeah, I think like everyone says, oh, that's Bigfoot. Like there's just one. Well, that's Bigfoot, and that's the Sasquatch, and that's the Yeti, and that's the Tennessee Wild Man, and that's yeah. the, like I think Momo, Missouri had Momo, yeah, Momo, which yeah. was the big, and it's all just you know different iterations of Sasquatch, dog esque werewolf creatures, dinosaur esque. Uh, you know, aquatic creatures, mm -hmm. and then like chupacabras, uh, little yeah, alien yeah. things like that. Yeah, that's that's. Um. So, recently, I had um an experience with. I, I want to say it's a cryptid of some sort. I don't know. I'm not going to categorize what it was because we didn't yes. see it. We just heard. Um. So uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the Confessionals podcast. Yes. Uh, that's Tony Merkel. Merkel. Okay, yeah. so um, I'm friends with Tony, and he just recently put out a movie called Sasquatch and the Missing Man with okay. uh, yeah. Wes Germer uh, from Sasquatch Chronicles. Um, so I did, we did a reenactment, and I was actually played Wes Germer in the film. <laughs> um, so we uh, were out in this. It's an undisclosed location because it is. Um, it's it's a very secret location because there's a lot of strange stuff that happens uh, and uh you know we don't want anyone going up there and you know messing up right the the i don't know it's just a magical place that's yeah <laughs> all no, I, trust there. me i understand um, you have explained <laughs> yeah yeah um so we're up there filming and um during filming we heard like some frogs croaking mm -hmm. And Tony came over. He's like, guys, you know, I heard this, you know, in the woods and it sounded like the predator, you know, that clicking sound. That oh, yeah, the yeah. Predator, right. Um, and I was like, it's just frogs. You know, I, I'm here. Yeah. That. Yeah. That. I was like, I just hear it's frogs, you know, because the frogs were croaking. Right. And yeah. um, so we got done filming and we're all just standing around the trucks and and chatting. And all of a sudden, I mean, we hear it. It's loud and it's coming from in the forest. And it is the weirdest thing I've ever heard. The only thing that I can, I've heard that sounds like it. And uh, besides the predator, um, a creature that sounds like it is the uh, shoebill stork. I don't know if okay. you know what the shoebill is. Yes. It's like a six foot bird and it like moves its beak and it makes a clicking mm -hmm. sound and it sounds very similar. But man, I mean, it, it was no frog. It was like, it was so loud. If it if it was a frog, it would have to be a giant frog, you know. So, needless to say, um, Tony being Tony, he was like, "Okay, guys, let's go. Let's track this thing down." <laughs> so uh, we all head into the woods, and um, we're walking down the path and stuff. And we get a uh, pretty far back in, and we decide to turn around and come back. Well, something throws. We didn't. We don't know if it was a stick or what, but something got thrown at us from the woods, oh. and um, yeah, it was it was very weird. <laughs> so I don't really know what ha what it was or what was going on, but there was something out there. You oh know. So, Are you familiar yeah. with the Mile High Campground in North Carolina? I uh, know I'm not. Okay, so this is you. You're literally about a mile over the clouds oh, at the dang. tallest peak of this mountain, uh, and it's a campground that you can camp at. So there's nothing around once you you drive forever up the side of this mountain to get to this huge peak. Uh, we're camping there one night, me, and my fiance, and I think my mother-in-law. Uh, she, we were in different tents and stuff, and. 
all of a sudden in the middle of the night we all we woke up and heard what sounded like this huge machine like whirring start just this whirring sound like this machine starting up and but mm -hmm. not like an engine just like a very clean running machine whatever it was and it got faster and faster in this and you heard it it started kind of shaking things it it sounded like something lifted up outside of the tent and she, my fiance called over to her mom and was like are you up do you hear this and she was like yeah <laughs> they're like stay in the tent I don't know what's happening, yeah. but, and then as soon as it's, it, as quickly as it started, it just got dead quiet and was gone. And I that's still crazy, have man. no idea <laughs> what that was. That That's weird. And now that you say that, that worrying sound, it seems like I've heard something like that in the past. I don't know where, but I'm, I just, that recall a memory of that sound. It's a very like a, distinct. That, yeah. Kind Almost of like, like you know, like the um, I don't know what they're called. I, I know you're a film guy, so I, I know you've seen Crocodile Dundee right back in the day. Um, yes. That thing, you know, where they spin over their head and it's like, yes, that, yeah, it's yeah. very much like that, except louder and like it's got you know, you can feel it. <laughs> yeah. So that's, that's yeah. crazy. No, that was, and I, I think I peeked my head out after it went away, but my philosophy if you, a lot of times if you just ignore those types of things it, the person in the horror movie you know the janitor with his headphones on never dies he's just yeah. minding his own business while someone gets brutally murdered behind him but he's <laughs> okay uh, oh man um yeah that's what i was thinking of because you know whenever we went to trek down the creature in the woods I was like this is this is how horror movies start <laughs> this is exactly how this starts <laughs> And uh, I was, I'm not in the best of shape, so I was like the last in the line of people, and I was like, I'm gonna be the first to go, and then I'm prepared. <laughs> I already, already, like, I already know this is gonna be me. <laughs> How they get picked off the back while the rest of the yeah. crew tricks yeah. on? Okay. <laughs> but yeah, man, it. I don't know. There's so much strangeness out there, um, and there's so much like, I mean, either. Everyone that has an experience is lying. Right. Or there's something going on. And I mean, gosh, there's, I mean, there's so many people that come forward. I mean, there I, really are. I mean, there's some, probably some people that are exaggerating or something, but you know. I mean, yeah, I mean, it happens, but I mean, everyone there, I mean, if, if one person is telling the truth and that's enough. Yeah. You know? And see, so, that's the worst part about even so the digital age that we've come into. And you could sit down and have a conversation with Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster and people would not believe you. Like, yeah, I know. Was, I know. You could have the most concrete evidence of all time. And people yeah. would be like, bullshit. I know. <laughs> I know. So have you ever... What do you, okay, what do you think about like the UFO phenomenon now that like the government is coming out and kind of, you know, declassifying some of the evidence? Oh yeah. What what are your thoughts on that? After, after it's about time. Like yeah. absolutely. That my boy Roswell back here, you know, I've had him <laughs> for years now, way before the Area 51 raid happened, me and him broke out <clears throat> way before everybody was talking about it. Uh but I absolutely think that there are not only extraterrestrials and other life forms but there are many different other life forms i think it is incredibly small-minded and selfish to think that we are the epitome of things that exist in this universe as expansive yeah, yeah. and growing that our planet is the only... god knows what kind of weird fucking otherworldly creatures are are out there and <laughs> that are way smarter than us yeah. So my friend Joel, we had him on, we asked him that question and he was like, you know, I'm less likely to be, believe like, you know, grays and like, cause everything, you know, kind of looks like us, you know, two arm, two legs, you know, a head. He's like, I'm more likely to believe that, you know, there's just giant, like 
monstrosity, uh, like a, this crab beast, you know, that comes down as an alien, then yes. you know, something looks like us, you know? <laughs> Is there not going to, yeah, be this, like, humanoid? I mean, some of them maybe, but... Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. There's, yeah, no, I'm, I'm all about the UFOs. They're 100% real and have been for a very long time. Yeah. So, the, the UFO thing... I kind of on, am on a, another camp than a lot of people. So I I think UFOs are not what they seem, and not like, you know, coming from millions and millions of miles away. I mm -hmm. liked the theory that they're interdimensional and they're coming over like into our dimension from the one just right next door. Absolutely. Or they're inside the earth. Like they're, they live because there's a lot yeah. of... The stuff about like I don't know if you about know about Admiral Byrd and the Hollow Earth theory and stuff, but I mean that okay. we're like people have seen like spacecraft with swastikas on them and stuff, and they are inside the Earth, and you know it, it gets crazy. But you know <laughs> those are my two favorite theories more than the space like millions of miles away. I, I want to sure. say they're already here. You know the, the interdimensional travel is without a question. Like time is not linear. Time oh, no, I don't is do that. forward, backward, side to side. It's the fucking Willy Wonka elevator. You know, yeah. <laughs> you can't. Yeah. <laughs> it's that's no. I absolutely interdimensional travel. Yes. Yeah. Because I mean, that's my also one of my theories about ghosts is um, maybe time is not linear mm -hmm. and it's all happening at the same time. You know, so we right now, you know, you may be walking through this house is abandoned. But, you know, you're seeing things that are actually going on in the past, mm -hmm. like real time. And then maybe they're seeing a ghost and they're seeing you, you know, in the future. So <laughs> it's like that. Yeah, that's I like that. It's, it's a really crazy thing. So what got mm -hmm. me started on that? I heard I was listening to a radio show and um, there's this guy that told a story that he said he was uh, a little kid and he came downstairs to get a sandwich or something on the fridge. Right. And it was like real yep. late at night. And he went in his kitchen and he saw a guy standing in his kitchen. And so he got freaked out and he ran away. Sure. Well, fast forward to when he's a teenager, he was in the kitchen late at night and he turned and he saw his self as a kid come down. So he's actually over that time is overlapping. It was him seeing that himself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Isn't that See, crazy? I, the whole, like, time is so expansive and large that... Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. I'm I'm a believer of that. Yeah. I mean, I I love time travel. Just to think... I don't know if it's possible, but I love to think about time travel, you know? <laughs> yes. Yeah. I don't think we could be responsible enough with it. Right now, no. I think that's why we don't get to know about things. Because we can't yeah. be this. Because yeah. look at what we do with what we have. We you can't be trusted with yeah meddling in time. Which I mean, you know, that's another theory is you know the spaceships we're seeing or whatever, they're actually time travelers like us from the future, you know, coming okay. back and viewing events. That's why a lot of like, I know they were. I was watching the show the other day. Um, I think what's it called? Expedition unknown or something it's on uh travel channel it's a josh gates show i don't know if you know who josh okay. gates is okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, expedition expedition x that's the name of it but they're talking about the Fukus, fukushima disaster that okay. they saw like ships over top of when there were the tsunami hit and i was thinking you know if maybe they are you know us from the future and they're going back and like this is just yeah. a history class hey kids this is what happened and Looks they're watching like, it real time yeah. you know <laughs> we're just a trip on the magic school bus route i know i know right <laughs> <laughs> so what is the craziest cryptid that you keep up with that you, that like you know some of the more interesting ones that catch your yeah. catch your eye <sighs> I don't know a lot about it, but the squonk. The squonk is one of one. my favorites. <laughs> the most depressed cryptid ever. I know. <laughs> oh, and then I there's love this, it. the one that is it's kind of sad because there's kind of a history behind it. Was um I'm I don't know if it's Kentucky. It's somewhere north of us, but they're they called them the melon heads. Do you know about yes. this? Mm -hmm. And apparently they were like mentally challenged 
Yeah. Um, individuals who were, you know, just running, like living in the forest. Mm-hmm. And I mean, that's, a, that's an unfortunate name that, you know, happened to you right. know, come about. That's another, like, it's not necessarily cryptid, but it's just a weird thing that happened, you know, in our history. Absolutely. Yeah. And like, I think the specter moose is oh, one of my, this. <laughs> it's Maine. Awesome. Maine has a specter moose. It's just this giant ghost moose that people have killed. They've shot this thing. They've even gone up as far as to like string the moose up and like bleed it out and then turn around. And the moose is like, whatever, down from the face. That's, That's crazy. All. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 and my favorite thing is every one of these stories that you read, people's first reaction to all of these things is to shoot it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, I, I shot at it. Why? Yeah. <laughs> um, I thought it would attack me. Yeah. Um, another thing is the, uh, in Tennessee, you know, there's the, the, the Black Panther legends, but yeah, I think those are more than just legends. Um, cause I mean, there's been a lot of sightings and like troll cam footage and stuff, mm-hmm. but, um, well, I mean, going back, what was it like, even in the song Rocky Top, was it like half bear and half cat? cat yeah. Or what? Like, I half mean, bear like, the other half cat. Yeah. There's something weird. Um, I think with some sort of creature that's not been discovered in the Appalachian Mountains, you know, there's so many things there. Cat. Are... Cat. <laughs> yeah. No, there there is no shortage of terrifying things in the Appalachian Mountains. To yeah. all the people that are thinking about moving to Tennessee, there are terrifying, horrible things in the Appalachian Mountains. Stay, <laughs> stay away. Uh, <laughs> that is true. <laughs> I said, I feel like there's been such an influx of people from cities to the south because there really hasn't been a good movie in a while about how terrible, scary rednecks are and yeah. monsters in the woods. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, gosh, that's, you know, that's another thing, you know, we, we kind of touched on earlier is the wild men, but they're like, there's feral people. I mean, there's been documented feral, feral people. Feral people. In the Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, people that have that still don't have running water. I, yeah, people that right here in our backyard that have never had running water, don't know how to read, don't know how to write, are yeah. living in shacks with no plumbing, no electricity. It's that's right here in the in the yeah. mountains, and they are very much feral people. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I I know like I mean it takes you like the movies. Um, what was it? Was a movie I watched? Or maybe it was it a TV show? I can't remember which one it was, but it was like these like backwoods rednecks kidnapping people. people to hunt them. Wrong turn. Um, was it wrong turn? I don't. It seems like it was something more recent than wrong turn. Hmm. I want, maybe you know what? Maybe was it was it supernatural? Maybe I was watching. Maybe. <laughs> I don't that know. Could have been uh, an episode. I, think, I want to say it was supernatural. It was an episode they, you know, supernatural. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, they kidnap and like, you know, would turn people loose to hunt them in the woods. And I guess I, I think they ate them. I mean, I think they're cats. <clears throat> so, See that? That's yeah. what happens. Yeah, that's what happens when you come to Tennessee. The crazy <laughs> rednecks, the cannibal rednecks. <laughs> All right, yeah, they, they wild. Yeah. So I got to ask you. Um, Dad brought up a, a film that I love. Have you seen Cannibal the Musical? Of yes, I love Cannibal the Musical. No yeah. one has ever seen this movie, and <laughs> they do not understand the genius. That it, everybody, you know, Trey Parker and Matt Stone. Everybody yeah. knows South Park. Everybody knows. But did you know that they were brilliant filmmakers before they ever touched yeah. South Park? Yeah, man, Cannibal the Musical was. Incredible. <laughs> I love it. Like that and basketball. Were oh, two yeah. Of my absolute favorite. <laughs> Just basketball stupid movies. So good. So good. Cannibal, I mean, I want to, like, oh, I want to see, I was going to say, I want to see basketball again because I, just to see how it holds up over time because it's been a few years since I've seen it. Oh, yeah. I, I, I love their comedy. I, I love yeah. their sense of humor. Their uh, 
absolutely my favorite duo. <laughs> Two of my yeah. favorite people. I mean, they have some other films too. They were they're really good. That are um, pretty uh, not safe for work or or yeah, very much. <laughs> neither. Yeah, they're yeah. <laughs> they're really good. Yeah. <laughs> um. So, speaking of like people like. You know, since we're talking about comedians and stuff right now, um, yeah, comedian esque kind of thing. Have you seen? Uh, have you heard of Tim and Eric? Did you ever watch Tim and Eric? Oh yeah, awesome show, great job. Yeah, those guys were ridiculous. It was so good. I love <laughs> watching Tim with the things that Tim Heidecker is still doing. Uh, yeah, he's involved in a lot of really awesome stuff. Yeah, I mean, gosh, I just remember the. I mean, I guess they would. Someone told me that they would like put ads i think on craigslist for actors and did, you know yes. they just got the craziest people you know <laughs> that's what uh workaholics did too oh really they got some of their people from a craigslist ads i didn't know that <laughs> that's funny <clears throat> i love those guys and danny mcbride is another like huge comedy influence of mine i i absolutely love every show that man works on every movie that man does <laughs> like yeah yeah man um gosh I'll... okay i'm trying to bring it back <laughs> yeah <laughs> just scary stuff um sometimes the audience don't like comedy what what's wrong with them what is wrong with people and not liking comedy you know well what about uh tucker and dale versus evil Oh my gosh, dude! That is like the classic it's, comedy horror movie. Dude, the scene so we brought good. it back. <laughs> yeah, we've merged dude. the two. No spoilers, but man, that that scene where the guy falls into the wood chipper. <laughs> he's like, oh, is that? <laughs> dude, college oh, kid blood. <laughs> no. Oh man, <laughs> no, um, absolutely excellent. Yeah, um, are but, you uh, um? So it's for anybody that is Knoxville adjacent or around you, uh, June 15th is when we'll be having the premiere of the movie. Oh, awesome. Um, yes, What Dwells Beneath will be premiering on, in, on June 15th out at the historic Grove Theater in Oak Ooh, Ridge, Tennessee. Yeah. I like the Grove. I've been there a few times. Yeah. I love the Grove. The Grove's super cool to us. Um, <clears throat> doors are going to open up at 6 o'clock. We'll have concessions uh, available. The movie, like I said, has got about a 35-minute run time. And then there'll be a brief Q&A afterwards, uh, followed by some photo walks with the monsters in the lobby. Oh, awesome. That's cool. Yeah. Uh, I would like to see the monsters up close. That would be cool. If I can make it, I'll yes. try to. Please, please, please come out to the premiere because I believe it'll be one of the only times that I have the monsters on site with me whenever I'm showing the movie. So are you going to um, enter into like any film festivals or anything like that? Have you, I am hoping <clears throat> to. Uh, I have a few on my list that I'm hoping to uh, submit to and, you know, kind of see where, where this thing goes. Mm -hmm. I definitely well, want to try um, to distribute it. Yeah. Now, do you, do you know um, William McAfee? He runs Central Cinema. Oh, okay. I think he does yeah. not go horror film fest. Yeah, yeah. I don't yeah. know if he to do that. I'm hoping to. That that's okay. definitely one of the ones that I'm hoping to submit to. Cool. Because yeah, Central yeah, Cinema is awesome. Knoxville Horror yeah. Fest is awesome. Yeah. Um. So I, we me and him go way back. Um. We actually his his old band and my old band toured together for for like a a week tour. But yeah, it was <laughs> nice <fun>. though. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it was like <clears throat> we had like this, uh, I guess, post hardcore band. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. We, we went all the way up to Boston. We played uh, a few shows in Boston. It was, it was Shit, awesome. Yeah. 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 I love it. Yeah. That was, uh, gosh, early 2000s, I guess. <laughs> a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. The and good days. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, um, so what, like, I was trying to get back to movies. Um, so in, in your opinion, <laughs> is there one horror movie, like modern horror movie that just stands out to you as like a must see? Mm. 
I think there are some good ones that have come out uh, in in the last little bit. Um, I was a really big fan of Nope. A lot mm-hmm. of people didn't like it, but I I was a fan of it. I was a big fan of Nope. Um, let's see. I'm trying to think about the most recent horror that I've watched. So I've been watching a lot of really obscure like off off the wall stuff here lately. Yeah. Um, but <clears throat> you know, the Terrifier series, I, I highly encourage anybody that hasn't checked out the Terrifier series, because I know they're about to release number three that's mm-hmm. coming out in early October. Uh that's just a super fun, hyper violent movie. <laughs> they the level of gore in that movie in those movies is absurd. It's ridiculous and I absolutely love it. And most of the cast, including Art the Clown, in full makeup will be at CreepyCon this year. Oh really? I did not know that. Yes. That's awesome. So yeah. on Saturday, yeah, David Howard Thornton is gonna be in full Art the Clown makeup doing photo ops. Um and we'll have pretty much the entire cast from uh, a, a lot of the cast members from the first and second film and third coming out. And uh, Daniel Roebuck from the Grandpa and Munsters. And he's been in a lot of Rob Zombie stuff uh, mm-hmm. and a lot of other things. Daniel Roebuck is a great star. And uh, I'm, I'm excited to do the convention this year. I'm, I'm excited yeah, to yeah. see everybody get back into the convention feel of it. You know. <clears throat> yeah, Um. so... Tell everyone a little bit more about the convention because that's yeah that's a because I I didn't I wasn't even thinking about going there but yeah I mean that's that's awesome because I know you you have a lot of stars coming and yeah yes and even though so CreepyCon typically is not a very like big name guest driven convention mm. they focus more on their attendees on the vendors and on their live shows because. A lot of conventions that I go to, at most, they'll have, like, a costume contest, maybe something else throughout the day. But <clears throat> CreepyCon's the only one that I know that has just, like, a consistent stage schedule. All three days, there's constant live entertainment going on on their main stage. Uh, there's panels to go to, workshops that you can attend. Um So just for stuff like that, I think it makes it more of an interactive experience for a lot of the attendees that come. Uh, And I try to do that, too. Uh, When I'm on stage, I really try to make sure that the guests feel like they're immersed in the whole experience of it. And everybody's there to have a good time. And I want to make sure that I help everybody have a good time. Yeah, that's awesome, man. Yeah. Um, Like I said, I have never been to CreepyCon. I really need to go, though. Yes, Uh, for sure. I think I think this year would be a good year to come. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. It's at the Knoxville Convention Center. Um, and then in September, I am actually uh, partnered up with a few of my very good friends to come to present an event of our own. Uh, oh, really? We'll be, yes. <clears throat> we're actually going to be rolling out a two-day, two-night horror-themed camping experience called Camp Dreadwood. Uh, oh, really? This will take okay. place in an Old West ghost town. In a place called Possum Trot, Tennessee. So oh. there'll be a fully functional saloon. Old, it's in it's in an old ghost town. Um, we've got live entertainment on the stage and horror movies showing every night. Then camping, ghost stories around the fire. We'll have a drag show in the saloon. We've got cosplayers running around. A fully immersive town experience. Lots of photo ops. And I think it's going to be a really really cool time. Uh, we got camping spaces available and day passes available for the people that don't want to camp. Maybe you just want to come hang out for the day and watch the horror movies that night. That's fine, too. A day pass will get you in as soon as the doors open, and you won't have to leave until the last movie plays at, like, midnight. Okay, that's cool. Um, so I don't know, like, who all you're talking about, but my, my friend Cody uh, Ipling... You know, he's the one that kind of uh, yes. told me to get a hold of you. So I didn't know. You mentioned cosplayers and stuff. So I was like, I bet Cody's a part of it. You know, <laughs> Cody and Kayla are uh, two yeah. of our partners, actually. Yes, on the whole thing. And then Mo and Ella Mullis, who run the Black Cat out in Oneida, are cool. our other team. Uh, Cody and Kayla actually worked on the film. Oh, with really? Us too. Cool. Uh, Cody, <clears throat> Cody created probably, I believe, two of the monsters and piloted 
and puppeteered at least three. And so, yeah. yeah, Cody did a lot, and Cody and Caleb both did makeup on the on the shoot, uh, FX, all kinds of stuff. So, I, I absolutely adore those two. Like, yeah, they are, they're they're two yeah. of my favorite people. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, yeah, I met them because I used to do uh, cosplay photography. So okay, uh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So, um, but yeah, we've you know been friends ever since. Uh, yeah, they're easy people to be friends with. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I've been like, I was asking them because they they have a podcast also, right? Mm-hmm. Or they still I do the podcast? I think they do. I'm not sure if they do or it not. It was like a horror movie podcast, if I'm not mistaken. Mm-hmm. I can't remember what the name of it was. Um, gosh, I don't know. I can't remember the name of it. It was something I... horror movie podcast. I don't know horror, <laughs> horror movie podcast. Slasher, slasher. Slasher something. Is it cinema? Slasher? Slasher? I don't know. I can't remember. And uh, Jack McKnight. Do you know Jack? Also? Yes. Yeah, Jack so will also he, be one of our cosplayers. Okay. Yeah. He he was part of the podcast also. Um, I wish I could remember the name of it. Yeah. Which is what good know. friends we are. I know. <laughs> great. Great friends, guys. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so, guys. Uh, I don't know why I said so, guys. My mind is like, seriously, it's Sunday and I got to go to work at like seven in the morning. So Ooh. my mind is wanting to like shut off right now. <laughs> oh yeah. It's like ready to, it's ready to wind down. I'm, I'm, I yeah, feel yeah. you. Yeah. Um, so I think we're going to wrap up right now because I mean, it, gosh, I, my mind is reeling right now and I want to, you know, know so much more, but I'm afraid we're going to go for another hour. <laughs> <laughs> and I like to keep the I like to keep the shows about an hour long. Absolutely. Um, so if you could just tell everyone where to find you and just you know once again about your movie and everything, just a little bit about you. Yeah. Absolutely. So starting from the top and going to the bottom. I'm Chris Bell, the Grand Duke of Spook. You can look me up on Facebook under the Grand Duke of Spook. You can look up the Creature Corner, which is Creature with a K and Corner with a K, because I'm cool with a K. That's my podcast and my horror show where we talk about all the hauntest news in horror. You can check me out at the CreepyCon Halloween and Horror Convention happening August 2nd through the 4th. You can come camp out under the stars in an Old West ghost town with me September 20th through the 22nd in at Camp Dreadwood, and more recently and most importantly, on June 15th in Oak Ridge, Tennessee at the Historic Grove Theater. Come see me premiere my film, What Dwells Beneath. Doors open at 6 p.m., the movie should start at 7, and a Q&A to follow. So please, please, please follow me on all the things. Look What Dwells Beneath film up on Facebook. Look me up on Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, and everywhere that you watch things, and I'll see you there for a great scare. <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> hey guys thanks again for joining us on afk discussions um once again if you are around the oak ridge area and you have you can go check out what dwells in beneath i highly recommend it it was a great film and uh, i just want to say thanks again chris for coming on man it was awesome thank you so much for having me this was a lot of fun i'm i'm, I'm glad that i got to check out the show and meet you and i'm sure we'll be meeting in a lot of other places soon Yeah, definitely, man. Definitely. Yeah. (laughs) All right, man. Well, until next time, guys. Peace. Boo-bye.